All right, good morning. You know, in, um, in the Old Testament, the Old Testament largely seems to buy, be about the relationship between God and God's people, that there are many, many covenants between God and God's people. And essentially, what's happening is that God is saying, all right, for you to evolve, for you to move forward, you need to learn to be obedient to the law in the covenant. And people fall short. And there's another covenant, you need to be obedient to the law, and people fall short. And I think this is very relevant for us because we all have some understanding of how spiritual law works, that spiritual law is always in operation, and sometimes we're really good and we're really attentive and we're right on point with it, and other times we, like the people in the Old Testament, fall short a little bit. Um, I don't know about you, but I love Big Bang Theory. Uh, I, 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 I've learned more about science from the Big Bang Theory than four years of science in high school. I tell you, it's been great. Uh, but science, you know, is, is the revelation of principles and laws that govern the universe, right? So we might not know why they work in certain ways, but they do, right? And, you know, you eat food, and it grows and sustains your body. I don't really know how all of that happens. I mean, yeah, it breaks down and blah, blah. I don't know all that. But but it does. You know, what you feel and think acts upon your physical being. I don't quite know how that happens either, but I know that my thinking and my feeling has a definite effect on my physical body. Now, you can cause what you think about to happen. We teach that in the science of mind. Because there is a spiritual law, this law that's talked about again and again and again in the Old Testament, there is a spiritual law involved. Now, you know, I, I, I like to putter in the garden, but I don't understand how the soil and the seed act together, but they do, right? Like, like planting a seed. You can't dig it up, and you can't think one thing and a minute later negate it. Years ago, years ago, I used to be a volunteer downtown at the World Ministry of Prayer, which was the uh, denomination's uh, prayer ministry we had. And people would often call, and, uh, and I would pray with them. And then as soon as I said it, as soon as I finished with the prayer, and so it is, amen, they would say, well, I don't think that's going to work. Uh, you know, I don't feel any different. That didn't help. I mean, so they'd immediately start negating what we did, not understanding that you know, there's a spiritual law involved. Over time, I got smart. I would say, now, before we pray, I want you to know, at the end of the prayer, I want you to sit in the silence for about five or ten minutes and just let the prayer work on you. Right? Because people don't realize that, you know, we say, I want things to be this way, but then I talk completely differently. Or I want things to be this way, and then I do completely differently. Hmm. I think our desires and actions have to be consistent with what we say we want to be and do and have in our life. You know, in a spiritual universe, there's always spiritual law involved. You know, so what I mean by this is that if you think thoughts of failure, that will produce failure, even though you say out loud, oh, but what I'm really interested in is success. You know, if you have unlovable thoughts, you're going to produce unlovable experiences in your life, even though you say you want love. People will say, oh, I have so much love to give. I have so much love to give. I don't doubt that that's true. I absolutely believe you when you say that. But I also know that at the subjective level, we may have things that contradict. And so that one cancels out the other. Our subjective mind doesn't know you want success or love until you consistently, Ernest Holmes says in our textbook, with mechanical regularity, you must think into the law of mind. Right? So our subjective mind doesn't know you want success or love until you think success consistently, until you think love consistently. Now, it takes a success consciousness, which thinks only success, to produce success. It takes a love consciousness, which thinks only love, to produce love. You know, the law of mind takes your command and begins to produce it. The law acts intelligently according to a spiritual principle. So here, here's an incredible thing. It can really empower you if you get it. You do not have to accept experiences that come to you. You can do something about them. Really, you can. I think this is one of the most extraordinary aspects of the science of mind teaching. You can create the kind of life, the kind of world that you want to live in. And yes, sometimes stuff happens. I get it. Stuff happens. You know, and we have the option to say, well, what will I do now? See, I think before science of mind, I thought that when stuff happened, I just had to accept that stuff happened. 
You know, and I just, well, this must be the will of God for me. You know, that was really where my thinking was. But now I understand. I have the option to say, what will I do now? Is there something else I would prefer to create? You know, what kind of consciousness do I want to have as I go through this particular experience? Because, you know, it's easy. It's not easy, but we all have the capacity, I think, to change our thought and grow our consciousness. Because what you think about yourself with conviction, and that's the word. That's our word of the day. We should have a word of the day in church, like Pee Wee Herman used to have on Pee Wee's Playhouse, right? <laughs> our word of the day is conviction. Ding, 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 conviction, right? You know, conviction, what you think about yourself, what you say about yourself with conviction, you become an expression. You know, the conscious mind chooses, and the subconscious mind executes. So what you think, you become. Thus, you discover for yourself that, that mind Mind is a science. And people always say, I don't understand. What's the science part of science of mind? This is it. You know, I am not a random or careless thinker. You know, if you see somebody's life and you think, God, I want what they have, then do what they do. Right? It's not that God favored them and they didn't. Everybody, everybody has what they have in life by right of consciousness. And so when we see other people doing well, that's supposed to inspire us. That's showing us what's available to us. If it's really important to us, we will do the work in consciousness. If it's not that important to us, we won't do that work in consciousness. Mm -hmm. So quantum physics is the science that recognizes the spiritual dimension underlying all reality. Right? It is the science that says we have a direct impact on the reality we experience. This is what that movie about a decade ago, What the Bleep, was, was all about. The universal principle exists regardless of how we use it. And do not kid yourself, you're using it right now. We're always, always involved with this principle. You're, even when you think it doesn't work, it's working, because that's how it works. All right? So the principle of mind responds to your desires and your clear intention. Remember, conviction. You accept, and, uh, you accept or reject this. You know, this has to be a conscious act. I, I, you know, I believe all good, all of the good in the universe is absolutely for us. God's good is available, and it is absolutely for us. And spirit has endowed all of its creations with its own creative power. But we, we get to use our free will. We get to use our choice for good or not so much. Right? I, I, I've, star I've started... Uh, so sometimes in the morning, as part of my practice, I, I, I write some pages. And I don't do this every single day, but I do it often. And I st uh, I've started at the end of my pages uh, to write, what do I intend to bring forward into my life today? Just that sentence. What do I intend to bring forward into my life today? You know, and so some days it's like, well, today I intend to bring forward uh, love into my relationships. Today I intend to bring forward uh, a heart of service. Today I intend to bring forward um, compassion when I talk to my family on the East Coast. On and on and on. You know, so demonstration, demonstration I think is, is very simple, but it involves very definite mental laws. It responds to your belief. You know, healing, it, you know, it, it heals according to your belief. It prospers you according to your belief. It creates new things through you according to your belief. So your belief is the way, it, your belief is the thing you think about a lot. You know, if you're thinking about it a lot, that, quanti that, that constitutes a belief, right? And you know, we say energy goes where energy flows. So as long as you believe that you cannot whatever. I cannot do that. I cannot have that. I cannot be that. That belief is absolutely what's holding you back. And so as you change your belief, conditions around you begin to change. You know, Jesus said, this was one of the great teachings he gave, it's done unto you as you believe. So the belief must precede the manifestation. Doesn't that make sense? The belief always has to be there before we have the demonstration, before we have the healing or the experience in the world. You know, it starts within, because as within, so without. And so you say, well, there is no physical evidence as to why I should believe um, 
that there will be love in my life, or there's no physical evidence as to why I should believe uh, there will be abundance. There's no physical evidence as to why I believe there will be uh, health or success or whatever it may be. Then that love, that health, that success uh, is what you must center your consciousness on. And what do I mean by center your consciousness on something? When we think it, and we feel it, and we see it, and we talk it, I would say that's the conviction that we're after, right? To ourself, not to other people. I'm talking about our thinking, our feeling, our seeing, our self-talk, you know, it has to all be in alignment with that. I think it takes work. It really does take work to keep the doubts and negative suggestions out, you know, but, but, but that's part of the process. You know, as, you, as, your, as your belief in your desire will grow, I think we all have to come and believe that life loves us, you know, it respects us, and life, the principle of life itself, wants each and every one of us to thrive. You know, and so when difficulties arise, you know, we have to get them out of our consciousness, you know? So I tell myself, I do not accept this. This is not the truth. This is not what God created. There is no reality in this experience. Choose what you will focus on, you know, because we either focus on the light or we focus on the dark. We can't hold both at the same time. So, so, so we want to not be claiming the difficulty, right? It's not yours. A difficulty doesn't belong to you. I don't care if it's a toothache or something infinitely larger. Don't say, oh, there's my problem. It's not your problem. Don't take it on. It does not belong to you. Tell yourself, you know, whatever is true about the universe, the universe as a whole, that's what's true about me. My nature is one with God. You know, a drop of water is not the whole ocean. I understand that, but it does contain within itself the same qualities, the same attributes that exist in the ocean. So we're like that drop. We have the same qualities and the same attributes of God. We are not all that God is. You and I didn't make the universe. But the same power and intelligence and presence that did make the universe is the power, presence, and intelligence that exists within us right now. You know, lo love is in here within each and every one of us. Peace, creativity, abundance, joy. You know, the science of mind and spirit makes a tremendous claim when it states that the individual should be free from the bondage of sickness, poverty, and unhappiness. That's a big statement, that everybody should be free from sickness, poverty, and unhappiness. It, uh, you know, and it does, however, carefully set forth the conditions under which this freedom operates, you know, and the law that's governing life you know, stating in no uncertain terms that unless one understands the conditions and obeys the laws, right, he will not receive the full benefit from this teaching. You know, so we have to understand the conditions under which this freedom operates and obey the laws. You know, I don't know about you, but I, hmm, I don't really like the whole notion of having to be obedient to the laws because I feel like, there's a part of my personality that says, oh, that's going to be restrictive. That's going to limit me. That's going to hold me back. But the truth is, it, like in so many areas of life, when we comply with the laws, then what that gives us actually is greater freedom. We get greater freedom of expression. You know, I think the world is beginning to realize that it has learned all it should from suffering. This is why when we suffer, it, it is so, we're so quickly aware, you know, um, and it's just so contrary to what we know, some, to what, we know to be the truth about us, right? That you don't have to have your life perfect. I see, this is the thing, and I often heard this in New Thought, that people would say, well, I'm working on myself. I'm gonna take this year, this decade, this lifetime, and I'm gonna work on myself. And then later, when I get all my stuff together, when I get all my stuff healed, you know, then, then I'm gonna do some really great work in the world. That is not the way it works. I am here to tell you that is a myth. That is not the way it works. You do not have to have your life perfect before you do something, before you put some good into the world, right? You know, start right now where you are with your life and the shambles it's in, right? And then what happens is that both, both though, but when you do, both your life and the world get better. Both get lifted up. You know, it's a mistake to think that I can't do anything. I can't tr contribute something of value to the world because I've got so much on my own plate to heal. Oh, I have so much work to do on myself. Well, you know, a lot of that work on yourself will get accomplished if you just think about somebody else because that is one of the great secrets of prayer. You know, one of the great secrets and tricks to prayer is that, you know, you pray for other people and your stuff gets handled. 
you serve other people and your stuff gets taken care of. And Ernest Holmes says in The Science of Mind, to learn how to think is to learn how to live. And part of this is recognizing I want to evolve consciously, not unconsciously. You know, that we are intended to grow beyond where we are today. I believe that's true for every one of us, right? And so where is the universe calling you to grow? Think about that right now. Where are you being called to grow? That you might be able to delay it, but you know what? We can't avoid it. You know, that, that we can't. You know, that... Um, I, um, I had a cute story from a, uh, a family recently. And, um, and they were taking their son to uh, baseball practice. And, uh, and before, before they got to the field where all the cars would be unloading the kids and stuff, um, uh, the son said, pull over, pull over. And they what? He said, no, pull over, please, pull over. And so they're, they're like a block or so from the field. And, and he says, kiss me now. And they're like, what? And he said, you know, don't embarrass me in front of my team members and, and the team we're playing and stuff like that. I have to get out there and play, and i got to focus on my game. And you're going to want to kiss me goodbye, you know, and good luck and all that stuff when I'm getting out of the car. And, it, and it, you, you know, it's tough to be a teenager. It's really hard. It is, you know. And, um, and, and, uh, and, and the mom said to me, she said, and then he looked at me and he said, you know I love you, right? You know, and I just thought that was the dearest, dearest thing. But you know, it's that balance, you know, between um, being in the world and knowing something greater. You know, I don't want to be embarrassed in front of my friends, but I also want my mom to know I do love her. Huh? That's how, that's how it works. All right, let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit that the presence of God, the power of God, the light and love of God that's everywhere is right here. It's within our own hearts and minds, within our very being. I know that the truth about God is true about each and every one of us because we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are made in the image and likeness of God. And so I speak the word for us that we are aware, deeply aware, that we are living our life in a universe of spiritual law. And we understand that that law responds to us with mechanical regularity according to our thinking, our speaking, our believing, our feeling, as within, so without. And so I claim for each and every one of us, we have an improved within right now, that we raise the bar for ourselves, and that we are consistent thinking and seeing and feeling that which we most desire in our life, and that that which we don't want in our life, we give it the minimal amount of tension, attention that we have to. We include in our prayer today our family members and our friends. We know that God surrounds and fulfills each and every one of them. We let our prayer be an, an enormous blessing, energy, in the world that we live in, so that it touches all people, all situations, remembering that God is right there, that healing is happening, that peace is the order of the day, that all needs are met for people everywhere. We bless our church. We bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today in consciousness, that everyone gets raised up. Everybody gets to be healed. And we welcome it and we say yes to it. So with a full heart, I release this word, I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.